If you're gonna go the negative route, you have to somehow separate your brand from it. Otherwise, what happens is the negativity bleeds directly into your brand and now I think, uh, well screw it, I don't want anything. I might not want KFC, but I also don't want your brand because I've now linked these two things unknowingly together in my mind. I was going behind enemy lines. Get ready to be exposed to the expose of the year. I had to do what I needed to do. A major undercover investigation has unearthed the shocking truth. I worked at Woolworths, Coles. And the whole time I was working there, I shopped at Aldi. Why would you pay more if you can get it for less? I would have taken the slap on the wrist for the money in my bank account. Introducing the supermarket whistleblowers. Say MSG. MSG! No way. Yeah, there's MSG in KFC and something called tripolyphosphate of sodium and silicon dioxide 551. Not 551. Some secret herbs and spices are secret for a reason. But grilled healthy fried chicken burgers have no hidden additives. Aldi and grilled, as you've seen, both of them are trying to bring down the competitors. You know, so they're, they're clearly the challenger brand. They want to take more market share and they're taking pot shots at the competition. So we know this because politicians like to deploy the same strategy, try and make the other person look bad. Now, Aldi, I really dislike this ad. Really dislike this ad? I really dislike it. Interesting. Intri go. Give me, give me more. Well, look at you. You're going at another angle. But I didn't like this ad at all. Like it was, a, it was a real piss take on 60 Minutes. And if you're looking at 60 Minutes, it's usually very negative. Like they're literally the dirtiest of dirty stories they're trying to create <laughs> and over-dramatize them to, to try and get some audience. And, you know, there is an audience that follow it. But it's usually very negative in terms of what the story is. Is hardly ever good news on 60 Minutes. So... The bad news is obvious, like, but what they did there, I think was too clever. You know, so the concept was really this. I work at Woolworths, I work at Coles and I shop at Aldi. That was a narrative they were trying to tell, you know, going like, I actually work at Woolworths, but I shop at Aldi because I want great prices. So I like the thinking behind it. The challenge is it wasn't that overt or for me, it wasn't that overt. It was kind of subtle. And yes, they changed the tone of it to feel like it was a bit of a piss take on 60 minutes. The challenge I couldn't get over was that it was so negative and at the end of it, it was branded Aldi. And I just felt like Aldi's work previously is amazing. It's clever. It's funny and it's on point and it's good, different. It's always branded good, different, and it's great, positive, uplifting stuff. This wasn't, and I just couldn't help for feeling that they've anchored their brand to what is quite a negative story. Like, and it's, do you really recall that that's a Coles Woolworths? Don't want to shop there because I actually shop at, at Aldi. Bit too clever. Yeah. Or are you anchoring your brand to what is quite a negative story? So <laughs> that's why I dislike this ad. And I'd be keen to get your thoughts because I think you're going to come at it from a different direction. Now, for me, I'd go Grilled was definitely the winner because... <laughs> no <laughs> oh here we go but i have a caveat okay okay caveat. Get me. so it was really overt that it was kfc that were trying to take down like mm -hmm. it was kfc and they're trying to take him down in the big way i thought it was quite catchy the song like it was i'm not sure what the actual song is but i've heard it somewhere before and it was like msg do you know what i mean yeah and you really related KFC is now anchored to MSG, you know? So now I'm thinking, saying KFC, MSG, not what you want and whatever 151 is, but it doesn't sound good and polyglyceride, whatever it was, but it sounded really negative. It was anchored where I thought they got it wrong. They used the same mnemonic for MSG and KFC in their grilled branding. So I've got this negative association with MSG now on grilled branding and i'm like Fuck no because now i'm seeing grilled branding song and thinking msg mm -hmm. so again i think the branding of that was out if i was to play it again i would go just hero kfc as msg bad dark horrible everything else and then i'd nearly not even worry about branding it well in grilled be very subtle really small logo and just 
you want the customer just to think negatively around KFC if that's your objective. So that's interesting. I think collectively you've, you've, you've hit a point, which is if you're going to go the negative route, you have to somehow separate your brand from it. Otherwise, what happens is the negativity bleeds directly into your brand. And now I think, uh, well, screw it. I don't want anything. I might not want KFC, but I also don't want your brand because I've now linked these two things unknowingly together in my mind. Correct. So that's it. Uh, mudslinging is incredibly difficult to do and get right. And that's why I think a lot of people won't do it. Like you, best way to do it, go back to the Coke Pepsi. Pepsi doesn't say Coke sucks. They do a blind taste test, Pepsi wins, and they say, see, Pepsi is better. So that's the difference between saying KFC sucks and saying grilled is better than KFC. So there's a, there's a slight difference. You're slinging mud by showing how much superior, how more superior you are to the other product. In the end, I don't, okay, I don't think either of these ads was spectacular. I'm going to go the Audi one works a little bit better for me. And here's, here's my thinking on this. You're spot on on the 60 minutes, right? So anytime I watch a 60 minute ad, come on those things on for big brother, 60 minutes, I turn the channel. I couldn't care less. That stuff annoys the living daylights out of me, but the people who don't turn the channel are exactly the type of people who uh, Aldi is probably trying to target. And, and I don't mean it like, this is, this is, this is going to sound horrible, but Aldi is a cheaper supermarket brand. So most of their initial customer share, large customer share is going to be the cheaper end of the market to get people not shopping at Kohl's who would really benefit from shopping at Aldi and go, oh, dang, this is really easy and nice for me. Those people, I think, really would resonate with that 60 minutes thing. And as soon as I hear the dark music and see the thing, my guess is their attention is like, yeah, what's on 60 minutes tonight? And they're so into that because that's their jam that when it comes out being a joke and it's for Aldi, they might go, <laughs> that's wonderful. I'm going to Aldi. So like, I think they were really specifically targeting a market who I think would have responded to that style of ad. I'm not that type of person. I don't think you are either. I, I, I hear 60 minutes come on. I'm like, okay, a neighbor yelling at a neighbor because they're two people who have nothing else to do with their lives. See you later. I got, I'm going to turn on antiques roadshow. Yes. I said that cause I'm a loser, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> In terms of just layout, it was more clear it was an Aldi ad. It was more clear they were slinging mud, and they tried to have fun with it by having the people blow the whistle and then ending in a bright light. I saw what they were doing. Was it perfect? No. Will it grab the attention of the people they want? Yes. Is it as good as the normal stuff Aldi does? No. I'd stick with what you're doing. You already do so much weird, fun, cheap, awesome stuff. Just keep doing that, man. If anyone's going to shop at LD, they probably already would have. Do what you do. The KFC grilled one, on the other hand, I there was no, there wasn't a thing good about that ad, if you ask me. Okay, let's just let's just start. Let's let's break it down into three things. One, we're selling grilled burger. The only time you see that grilled burger is in that dude's hands. It looks nasty from frame one to the last frame. That burger does not look tasty. It looks like a smushed, like they used one burger for the entire film shoot and the takes they used were like later in the day. So the thing was getting white and shriveled. Did you notice that? That the burger did not look appetizing in the least. But at the start of the frame. Yeah. Well, the kid, the guy, the dude's sitting there on the couch with the burger. It's supposed yeah? to be a KFC burger. Oh, I thought that was a grilled burger. No, it's supposed to be a KFC burger. That's why it's like, why are you eating KFC that's got MSG? What? That is the stupidest commercial I've ever seen. If you're going to poke fun at KFC, show the chicken. Don't show a bun. I wouldn't know that KFC served a burger from Man on the Moon because in the KFC ads, they have the ones with the stick in the bucket. Oh, that was a... So you've actually pulled up a really valid point because where they had a flaw in that setup was KFC wasn't well branded. It was sitting on the like the the coffee table in front of him, but it was very small. Like yeah. it should have gone into KFC where you see like literally the branding and then you go up to him. Like it needed to be more, more overt that it was KFC. So like you actually raise a very valid point. So that was, take it from a guy who was just so good rule of thumb. If I'm sitting there watching it, I thought the entire time that was a grilled burger oh, and that they were wow. ripping on KFC to say that this burger is better. And I'm like, your burger looks nasty. If you're going to rip on a thing called Kentucky Fried Chicken, show chicken. Yeah, they might serve a burger. They might also serve a Coke, but you don't want to make fun of KFC while holding a Coke. It's it's 
pick the biggest target you can and hit it. When you're trying to show, this is what the competitors do. If you want that, go there. This is what we do. If you want that, come to us. Yeah. This is distinction bias. It's contrast. The best way to do that is going, here is coffee pods at Woolworths. It costs you $7.50. Here's coffee pods at Aldi. It's $2.80. Like same message, but very simple. You can't get up. Yeah. Like it's right in your face. It's not too clever. Same with burger. You go on the left is a burger from KFC. It has MSG. It has this, it has that. On the right is a burger from grilled. It's this, it's that, it's that. You Make can't get up that's and that's it then you don't have to even pot shot all you're doing is you're making it you're just distinction bias you've gone from slinging mud to just pure distinction bias and say you know i know we all know from this distinction one is better than the other but i never had the bad talk i didn't have to be clever i just said here we got this they got this make a choice because the challenge with advertising the numbers are quite staggering i think the latest numbers at 63 percent of ads are misattributed to a different brand yeah. So now you go, even if I'm trying to brand my ad well, people are confusing it or anchoring it to another brand. And we've seen it before. Like there was a, quite a famous one. I think we've spoken about it with ING where another bank was pushing out this product, but ING was just harvesting it because they they confused the brand and the anchor. And now yeah. you're slinging mud, which are negative, and you've got your brand at the end of it whoa, the last thing I want to do is anchor a negative message to my brand. I wouldn't even go there down this strategy. That's why I like, I don't like it. And that's why I think both of these are a great example of I wouldn't endorse it um, because I think there's a much better strategy of getting the same outcome that you're after. And if you, if in, in you're spot on too, because like take, take this one, anyone who thinks about it, and that's a huge number, 63% of misattribution. That's a massive note that that should get people's Petrified. heads going, Oh, we got to focus on this, but this one, no one will misattribute it to KFC. But the point is, is 63% of people will most likely attribute it to nothing. They will remember it as the anti KFC ad, but the pro nothing ad. Like, I, I don't, I, I don't know because there wasn't that clear, distinct contrast. I'm not a hundred percent sure that the, this is a grilled ad is really going to, if had you not written grilled in the email you sent me, I'm not hundred percent sure I would have known but, the hell I was. Watching. But even there. So what you may do if you're effective with this strategy with MSG is you'll impact KFC. So there might be, you know, 2%, 5%, whatever it may be that just go second guess their KFC. Where else can I go yeah. that cool? You've taken some share, but I haven't owned that. They're going to go to grilled. Like that's what they want to try and do. They want to bring someone else down and us up. But if you're going to do it, use distinction bias. It is clean. It is pure, like just facts, data, evidence. Like if you do have a point of difference, it's not clever though. And I think that's where creatives want to go clever. V. If you're going to do this, and there's there's two more things you want to remember if you're going to do this. One is what's called the transience effect is if I'm forced to hold something in mind while you're making the comparison, chances are I'm not going to be able to do that. So when you make a comparison, they they have to be close within space and they have to be close within time. Otherwise, there is no comparison. There's just memory and me trying to remember something later. So in this ins- instance, all the KFC stuff happens at the front end. Then their burger comes in at the end. By that point, we have the transience effect. I've never actually compared your burger to their burger. I've compared your burger to my memory of what the heck I was just talking about. And who knows what that may or may not have been. But if you bring them congruent in time, so I see them at the same time, now you're not relying at all on my memory. And it's a straight comparator effect. So we see this a lot in class. Like, Think about it educationally, where I give you instructions on a task. And I say, just everyone sit. I'm going to give you a set of instructions. Now go do it. And half the kids won't They'll get through instruction one. They'll be like, what the hell are we supposed to do now? Because there's a transience effect. I, I took what I needed you to be thinking and what I need you to be doing. And I separated them in time. And now you couldn't do the two. So how, so if you're going to do a comparison, one, bring them together. And two, if you're going to do a comparison, compare apples to apples. Like if Aldi says, go back to your example. And Aldi's like, coffee pods cost $7.99 at Woolworths, but bananas cost 99 cents here at Aldi. That's not a fucking comparison. 
if you're going to KFC, chances are you want chicken. If you're now comparing KFC chicken to a burger, dude, whoever is going to KFC doesn't want a burger. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been going to KFC. And if they are going getting a burger at KFC, it's going to be a chicken burger, which is not what Grilled does. They do hamburgers. Well, that's You've what now they're compared to apples and oranges. They're trying to introduce their chicken burger range. Like, and I think this was a lot. Oh, look, the fact shit. that you can't recall any of it suggested <laughs> oh, i'll no. retract the fact that dr j can't recall that kfc was actually the burger that was meant to look shit on screen and it was supposed to be anchored to msg and he didn't even know it was a grilled ad no look that was weird <laughs> that was a weird look, commercial I, I didn't like it i did not first like time it. ever i'm just gonna go they're both a fail there are no winners here only losers and I got, that's an umbrella, an umbrella. If you're going to be doing mudslinging, that's just not your probably strongest. If you do it, there's a way I'm sure to do it, but it's not safe. Well, well it's interesting. Like if I go to Weapons of Influence, the 12 principles that influence persuade human behavior that marketing and advertisers use, mudslinging never features. Yeah. No, like <laughs> making doesn't. fun of somebody else, probably not the best way to make yourself look good no that that whole principle hinges on distinction bias which is comparator so like we, we don't even focus on it it was never recommended so it's just interesting it's kind of why i just thought it, it might be interesting to discuss the the mudslinging 